So I've made a video before on flipping cars and there's not as much money into it as an old piece of junk like this. This is my buddy Luke's. He paid $300 for it from a shipyard that basically used and abused this thing um, until they said we need something new. Um, it didn't have these tires on it. They did end up putting new tires on it. They got a bucket for it with it, but they ended up buying the forks. But they really haven't touched anything on the machine other than that. Leaks oil, they just top up the oil. But this thing is worth $3,000 any day of the week. It does have the gas engine in it, not the little Kubota diesel. If you've got a diesel, it's worth even more. They've had this thing now for I think five or six years at least. Uh, good for plowing snow, moving stuff around. They do construction and just an all around handy little thing to have around. Unfortunately, it doesn't run anymore. And if it does run, it just barely runs. So we got to figure out why. Guys, <laughs> when I say they haven't spent a whole lot of money on it, <laughs> it's really, guys, invest in the seat. <laughs> like, keep plowing snow with this. His ass must be freezing. <laughs> First, when I get a machine in, I verify that the customer is accurate in saying what he told me. Um, he told me no start. I did drive it in here. Um, I've been tinkering around with this a little bit. And the first thing I did when he got here, um, had it on the trailer, we checked for spark and it barely had any spark. If you've got a gas engine and it doesn't run and you can't remember the last time that it had a tune up, probably first things you need to do is spark plugs cap and rotor so this is your cap and your rotor pushes up against here current comes from your coil and goes through your rotor which spins around and without actually touching these has to transfer the current to fire after spark plugs this is probably the number one reason why things aren't running um, and this definitely needs to be replaced so we looked online tried to find cheaper parts they were no better off than the bobcat prices surprisingly I think we could get some cheaper ones, but it would take a couple months to get. So if you're ahead of the game and you're like, okay, this winter I need to do a tune-up, buy them in October and install them in January. But because he wants this for snow, we, uh, we need to get this running. So new cap. So this is the old rotor. And you can see this is where that center nub on the distributor cap pushes down and your current goes through here. And then this is what spins around and hits each one of those nubs. Um, this is extremely dirty. You're losing voltage through here. You've got loss, but check, check this out. <laughs> this is the rotor, which is in your distributor and it's time to your engine. And you can see I got a little bit of play. This is the new one. And that would be the backlash on the T. As it's spinning, it'll go towards the back and that's your timing. This was the old rotor, which <laughs> has this much slot. <laughs> so what that's actually doing is because it's just worn out in the D shape that it is, it's actually delaying the timing. So we're probably gonna add an extra 20% in power just by advancing the timing. So. We're gonna leave this for now because it works. If we find that we have a bad spark, then uh, we'll put points on it, but there's some pieces missing when they converted it to this. This doesn't come stock with this magnet. I think this was an upgrade. If it still works, we'll leave it alone. All this has to do is tell it to on off and your actual spark gets made by your coil and determines how strong of a spark that is. Okay, so we're gonna give you a quick lesson on a points ignition system. Even though this is a Hall effect, we're gonna kind of talk about the basics of the entire thing. Um, this is your coil, and this is capable of making about 40,000 volts. 
You need about 40,000 volts to jump between the electrode on the tip of the spark plug to the actual top here. And that's what ignites your fuel system. If you can hear it, I think it's 4,000 volts. So when you're rubbing your feet on the carpet and you got wool, your grandma's knitted socks, that would be about 4,000 volts just, just hearing it. When you pull your, your sweater off and you can hear that static, the crackle, that's about 4,000. If you can feel it, it's about 10,000. So when you go to pet the cat after you've walked on the carpet, and yeah, that, that's about 10,000. If you can see it, it's about 40,000 volts. Voltage doesn't kill you, amperage does. A third of an amp will stop your heart, but volts is just uh, something to laugh at your buddy when he's holding the spark plug and you crank it over. To do that, we have two sets of windings inside the coil. We have your primary, which is just a bunch of thicker wires that you run your 12 volts through, and then a pile of secondary windings, which are a lot smaller. So what happens when you feed the current through the primary windings and collapse it, they'll fall onto the secondary windings. And because there's 10 times more of those windings, you turn 12 volts into the 40,000 volts. To do that, they came out with a points ignition system. And what that is, is there's lobes for each cylinder that open and close this contact. Now we've got negative going to the frame of it, and we've got positive 12 volts going to this connection right here. When you open this up, you break that contact and those positives have nowhere else to go. So that's what collapses the windings. To do that, we also need a condenser, which will store the extra current. If it didn't have a capacitor, when we open this, it would arc in between. So if you're not getting a pulsating 12 volts to your positive coil, it could just be the condenser. Uh, we need to open these up to about 18 thou. So when the lobe is pushing on that, we wanna set the gap to about 18 thou and we need to have clean contact. So if you've got a no start or if it's been sitting for a while, if it happened to stop where it's open, you have a better chance that when it's closed, they start to corrode together and these points are no good anymore. It doesn't allow the current to pass through. So this is obsolete with this machine because we've got the Hall effect, which is a magneto, which does the same thing. Less moving parts, less failure points. And if the gas is the issue, then um, we can leave this thing alone because Basically, all this is is an on off. Okay, so I went to go pull the or drain the fuel out, and it definitely smells like gas. Unfortunately, it's not why it's not running. So we go on to the next thing. Um, we've got a fuel pump, which is this little guy right here. We've got a fuel filter pointing at the fuel pump, and this is a mechanical pump that rides off the camshaft. So there's a little lever that goes back and forth on a diaphragm and that will pull the fuel from the tank through this filter and then up to the carburetor. So what I did was very simple. I took this hose off, I put it into a little can. I had a buddy crank it over and you have to be really careful with that. Don't be jumping starters and stuff with screwdrivers because a little spark and fuel is a big problem, <laughs> especially with wiring like this. We've got exposed wires. Be very careful with that. But anyway, I've got fuel going through the diaphragm up to the carburetor and that's where it stops. So we figured out spark. We figured out that the fuel is flammable. I poured it a little bit outside and lit it on fire. We've got it going through here. We'll order a filter and change that anyway. Oh, and it's Fram. That's, that's definitely why it's not running. What we're gonna do now is pull the carburetor off. Um, I don't know exactly what this little guy does right here, but when I jump this wire, um, when I unplug it and plug it with the key on, I hear it clicking. So that is probably a shut off for something. Um, and that likely could be the culprit, even though it's clicking and I can hear something moving, I have to guarantee that it's moving this rod and that the fuel is actually going through. Once we're at the carburetor, it's pretty simple um, and it's just been a part. So I'll try and see, I'm leaning towards this now. So let's pull this carburetor off, here we go. All right, so I pulled this out. Uh, negative, positive, and this thing went click, 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 click. So this thing is working, done. Now we have to trace our fuel coming in. We need the fuel going from here, down to a little jet going down into there. So take these four screws out. There's one down in there. Each car will be a little bit different, and you'll see this. Um, also see some fuel in the bowl. That means that the needle and seat is working. So you can blow in this hole and then just raise and lower the float. Um, what happens is the fuel bowl fills up, says I got enough fuel, this goes up, shuts off the little seat, 
the needle in the seat there and that shuts off the fuel flow going into the bowl so that it doesn't start spilling out all over the place. So now we need to make sure, you see the little jet at the bottom here? That right there is a metering jet that when the air goes through here, creates a vacuum and pulls fuel in through here. So as long as this is open, that should be a passageway from here into the jet that sprays fuel into the air fuel mixture here. Something's not going on there. So we will pull this jet out. Uh, we'll blow that all clean and then go from there. Okay, so following, following, following this, this pin. This is where this fits in. You gotta make sure that's open. So take a blow gun and that goes to this port right here. That's open, so then we follow that to here. That port ends up at this port. So that must be some sort of automatic choke or something, maybe add a little extra fuel. But regardless, that is open as well. So pull the jet out of the holder here and then blew the blow gun and you can clearly see a little bit of fuel spray coming out here. So that is your fuel flow going into here, filling that up, going into here and going into the engine, but it's not running. And then I noticed this, I did not unhook this. This is a vacuum port, a big one. Um, the front one here goes to the distributor for the vacuum advance. So as your vacuum goes up, it changes the timing, but this one was open. So this one could go to vacuum brakes or that's it. <laughs> and uh, I got to find that hose because I did not disconnect this. With this open, you wouldn't be getting any vacuum. It wouldn't be pulling air through the top. It would be pulling air through here, bypassing the little port right here, which is your vacuum sensing, which would pull the fuel through. So that would result in a no fuel system. We have a video on checking small vacuum leaks on the forklift. Check that out. Use a little propane torch. Very simple. Um, that might have worked on this, but it was a no start altogether. So when you're trying to crank it over, you can just take your hand and put it right over the right over the top and create a massive vacuum. If it runs better, you more than likely have a vacuum leak. So we'll find the other hose. We'll put this back together. I can verify that it's everything's here is correct. So we'll find the hose for that. If not, we'll just put a cap on that and we'll be doing wheelies in the snow in no time. Here we go. So the torque spec on these screws on the carburetor are when you're tightening them and your face makes this face. If you make this face, you've gone too far, so don't do that. Okay, so right there is the blow-by or the EVAP that goes back to the intake. That pipe is there. There's a hose that goes right there that goes up to this thing, which connects to the intake again. So into another emissions thing. So that's in place. Looking at all the other hoses, that is a fuel line back there. Yeah, it's hard to focus. But anyway, all the lines are accounted for. We've got extra spark plug wires, which is fantastic. I'm gonna cut that one out. Um, and there is nothing else. The carburetor will definitely get a cap on here. We can always pull that off, but for now that is, I think our biggest problem. Let's put it back on again and fire it up. Here we go. Okay, so we got the carburetor back on again. Um, we've got everything kind of hooked up. Still have the air filter out. Let's see if it starts. As far as I know, everything is fine with the carburetor. Should be getting fuel. Okay, so that's not great, but I still don't, we got spark, we got fuel. I'm wondering if the fuel is just not happening at the right time or the spark's not happening at the right time. So I'm gonna move the distributor. That distributor, if you, earlier in the video, that rotor was so sloppy. I'm wondering if people were messing around with the timing. Crank it all the way one way, see if that makes a difference. You guys try and think of what everybody else did before you and what their level of intelligence was over <laughs> what work they did, so. That sounds better. Okay, so 
I think it's timing. The issue is, this thing is a pile of garbage and not very safe. So I can't check the timing and crank it at the same time because if it fires up, there is no real neutral safety and I think it's gonna run right into the race car. This thing is old. They bought it for 300 bucks. I'm not gonna put a pile of money into it. It's lunchtime. Um, I think we're getting closer. Yeah, she's pretty special, eh? Yeah, really, you can't go wrong. Why is the seat part of blue height? There we go. No! <laughs> Why? <laughs> what happened? You to run. Just gonna keep that under control. Uh oh, something <laughs> bad happened. Well, it's on fire. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wanna waste the fire extinguisher. Did you get it? Ah, it's still just burning the extra off inside. We're, we're all good. I might put the pin back in the fire extinguisher. Yeah, I didn't want to make a mess. <laughs> On the new floor. <laughs> All right, so now we got fuel. We've got spark as it ignited my um, air cleaner assembly on fire. All we were doing there was just cleaning that out. Uh, burning that takes care of all the dust and all the stuff in there that you don't want in your engine. So we just kind of let that burn nicely. So we verified that our air cleaner assembly is now clean. The hose inside is nice and clean. Now we need to wonder why did we lose spark? Well, if we check, uh, we're gonna start at the beginning, check our battery. We got our voltmeter here. Nice little Mac, we'll go post to post. We've got 12.48, which is a touch low, a little scooch low. Should be about 12.6, but that's fine. Now this is the wire with the key on that feeds my coil, 12 volts positive. Let's see what's going on there, one hand. And we've got 11.05, so it already dropped um, a volt and a half. And that's kind of a big deal because while you're cranking it, your starter is taking a pile of amperage. It's taking 150, 200 amps. Um, your battery is probably able to put out about 600 amps. This one's a nice big one. But when it drops down, if we don't have a minimum of 9.6 volts going to the coil, it's not enough to fire the spark plug. So even though it's cranking, it's turning around and around and you're thinking, yeah, it'll go, it'll go. If if the voltage drops below 9.6, it's not enough to collapse that coil, not enough to fire your spark plug. So there's a connection here, there's a connection here, there's a connection here, and then there's probably 12 more by the time it reaches the key. And that is a problem because now we're getting into wiring and you can tell a customer how long it's going to take to change your spark plugs and give your inner distributor a tune up, clean your carburetor, make sure that the fuel is going through and to set your timing. There is no set amount of time on how long it's going to take to clean this crap up. Now this is 30, 40 years of 20 different people looking at it and you get to figure out what actually happened. So I'm gonna dig into this a little bit. Nice broken wire there. Basically we're just tracing wires, trying to find a clean ignition source so we can still shut the thing off inside the cab. And then once we do that, we'll go back to trying to fire our spark plugs and set our timing. All right, so we started at the battery. Uh, we used to have our terminals on these battery clamps, but there's a stud right here. So I got rid of those clamps and went straight to the studs. That's one bad connection taken. I left this one because it's handy to stick my probe on. Um, then I cut out this wonderful wiring and went back to the original 12 volts. Now from the battery here, straight across on my posts, I have 12.85 and when I go to my terminal here I have 12.51 which means that I've got a 0.3 of a volt loss between here and here and that's like getting 97% on a test that you really don't care about and is it really worth trying to study for hours and hours for that 0.3% or are you pretty happy with 97? I'm pretty happy with 97. So we're gonna clean this wiring up 
Uh, basically just uh, nice new sealed connections between here and the coil and then we should be good to go. Okay, so uh, back on the skid steer and turns out that this balancer here um, can get put on any which way one of four spots. So it doesn't matter where this timing light or zero lines up because it means squat. Uh, so then I pulled the spark plug and tried to see when the spark was happening. I definitely got spark. Um, I got fuel now and um, I thought maybe pull the valve cover because I need top dead center is when number four is rocking. Number one is on top dead center of compression, but the valve cover is a pain in the ass to take off. It's probably going to leak. I don't have a gasket and basically it's just trial and error. So you can, um, I just move the wires around a little bit and it started to cough and spit. So I think I can get it started. Issue is that it creeps forward in neutral. Um, so I either need to jack it up. Um, it's kind of a safety hazard. Thing is gas. Um, all the fuel lines should be replaced. There's a lot of things should be done with this thing, but I'll play with the timing a little bit until it looks good. But I did find, uh, ignore the Sparco seat belts, but I did find an old seat from a forklift that I was keeping for about 10 years just for this occasion. Cause that is not very comfortable. So I'm gonna replace the seat first and then take it outside. I think I, think I got it and I never wanna see this thing again. So get at the bottom of the seat, you gotta lift the cab up and it's actually just the bolt there and the same bolt on the other side. And then you just lift and it's super easy, but it's not, it never is. <laughs> Super sluggish going out of the shop. Problem is this thing doesn't have a parking brake, it creeps forward, it's kind of dangerous. So what I suspect is happening though is because that rotor had so much slop in it, imagine this being your piston and it doing work. Now you want your fuel and air to come in when your piston's up high. You want that explosion to happen and shove that piston down. I think the timing is so delayed that my piston's about here before the spark comes and there's not much energy left pushing that, that crankshaft down. So we'll advance the timing a bit and then see if that makes a difference. Here we go. Okay, so there's the cat. So the distributor spins this way and what happens is, oh, for shit's sake. Oh, yeah, yeah. A little piece fell out. That's what that was. Ah, broke my rotor. All right. <laughs> if you're moving the distributor to advance the timing, you rotate it this way. If you want to advance it by a tooth, pull the rotor out and then move it one tooth over and then stick it back in again. So I'm going to do that and then hopefully it'll still fire up. But um, yeah, this is no good. So uh, hopefully it'll run. If I can get it running, I'm going to tell Luke he's got to get a distributor because this magnetic pickup is not in good shape anymore either. <laughs> and at some point, you gotta call it quit. So I'm gonna hopefully he can get it running. If he can get another distributor, he can probably get this thing running um, for another couple years, maybe just some odds and ends stuff. But at some point, you gotta call it quits on a machine. I think I'm gonna burn this one to the ground. Okay, so it runs, but I think it's running on three cylinders. And I suspect that it's the distributor. If we can't get a distributor, I'm gonna wait for Luke to get here. We'll fire it up. Um, I'll 
pull a wire, but I can't do that without somebody in the seat. We'll see when Luke gets you. Here we go. All right, if you remember that truck from when we built the barn, that's Luke with his trailer. Finally picking up Bob. We still need a reluctor for the distributor because it's running on three cylinder, but you're having issues trying to find one. Right. Yeah, Bobcat doesn't want to talk to you about a $5 part, so he's just going to run it as is for now, and then we'll deal with that later. So hop in there, see if it starts. <laughs> I might have to uh, give her a little extra choke here. Oh, there's a hook! <laughs> I didn't know there was a hook. <laughs> I'm crawling in under, under this stupid thing. <laughs> Okay, easy, like slow movements on the throttle until it warms up. Was this how it was? Uh, like, it, no, like it, she had more jam before, but then like I said, when it went for a dump, it went for a dump. Yeah, yeah. And then it, it wouldn't start at all. Right, right. Worst part is I'm gonna miss those forks because they, fit on the Kubota. I thought it ran better than that. Is the choke on? She's down now. Yeah. There, don't kill me. Yeah, that's it. Throttle down a little bit. Bob already tried to kill me like six times. So it's it's hard starting it from the back and then it creeps away and then you're cranking it and then <laughs> auto crawl. Mine had an auto lower, but I've never heard of this auto crawl thing. Go easy on Luke in the comments because uh, it really, I think, how much do you pay for it, Luke? 300 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it, it sucks when you have to put money into it because you're like, ah! Are we going to see this thing again, Luke? Probably. Probably. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting don't ready. drop it off at my place, please. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for this one. Um, you win some, you lose some, but we're just trading labor. Uh, no bill for this one. Just uh, trying to keep some old shit going. If it wasn't for you guys watching these videos, I wouldn't be able to work on stuff like this because it does not pay. Remember, get out there, work on it, get your fingers dirty. You're not filthy, you're not rich. Here we go.